In Islam, al sira al nabawiyya prophetic biography, Surat Rasul Allah, Life of the Messenger of God, or just al sira are the traditional Muslim biographies of Muhammad, from which, in addition to the Quran and trustable hadiths, most historical information about his life and the early period of Islam is derived. Topic <inaudible> etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> In the Arabic language the word sirah or sirat Arabic, sirt comes from the verb sarah present tense, yasiru, which means to travel or to be on a journey. A person's sirah is that person's journey through life, or biography, encompassing their birth, events in their life, manners and characteristics, and their death. In modern usage it may also refer to a person's resume. It is sometimes written as, sirah, sirah, or sirat, all meaning, life, or Journey. In Islamic literature, the plural form, siyar, could also refer to the rules of war and dealing with non Muslims. The phrase Sirat Rasul Allah, or al Sira al Nabawiya, refers to the study of the life of Muhammad. The term Sirah was first linked to the biography of Muhammad by Ibn Shihab al Zuri, and later popularized by the work of Ibn Hisham. In the first two centuries of Islamic history, Sira was more commonly known as Maghazi literally, stories of military expeditions, which is now considered to be only a subset of Sira. Early works of Sira consist of multiple historical reports, or akbar, and each report is called a kabar. Sometimes the word tradition or hadith is used instead. <laughs> Content The Sira literature includes a variety of heterogeneous materials, containing mainly stories of military expeditions undertaken by Muhammad and his companions. These stories are intended as historical accounts and used for veneration. The Sira also includes a number of written documents, such as political treaties e.g., Treaty of Hudaybiyah or Constitution of Medina, military enlistments, assignments of officials, letters to foreign rulers, and so forth. It also records some of the speeches and sermons made by Muhammad, like his speech at the farewell pilgrimage. Some of the Sira accounts include verses of poetry commemorating certain events and battles. While some of which are considered to be of a lesser quality and lacking authenticity, the most serious of those are the ones by Hassan ibn Thabit. At later periods, certain type of stories included in Sira developed into their own separate genres. One genre is concerned with stories of prophetic miracles, called alam al nubuwa literally, proofs of prophethood. The first word is sometimes substituted for amirat or dal il. Another genre, called fa il wa mathalib tales that show the merits and faults of individual companions, enemies, and other notable contemporaries of Muhammad. Some works of Sira also positioned the story of Muhammad as part of a narrative that includes stories of earlier prophets, Persian kings, pre-Islamic Arab tribes, and the Rashidun. Parts of Sira were inspired by, or elaborate upon, events mentioned in the Quran. These parts were often used by writers of Tafsir and Asbab al-Nuzal to provide background information for events mentioned in certain ayat. Topic: <laughs> Comparison to Hadith. The main difference between a hadith and a historical report is that a hadith is not concerned with an event as such, and normally does not specify a time or place. Rather the purpose of hadith is to record a religious doctrine as an authoritative source of Islamic law. By contrast, while a kabar may carry some legal or theological implications, its main aim is to convey information about a certain event. In terms of structure, a hadith and a kabar are very similar. They both contain isnads chains of transmission. Thus starting from the 8th and 9th century, many scholars have devoted their efforts to both kinds of texts equally. Also some historians consider the Sira and Maghazi literature to be a subset of Hadith. Reception During the early centuries of Islam, the Sira literature was taken less seriously compared to the Hadiths. In Umayyad times, storytellers cause, place, Qasas used to tell stories of Muhammad and earlier prophets in private gatherings and mosques, given they obtained permission from the authorities. Many of these storytellers are now unknown. After the Umayyad period, their reputation deteriorated because of their inclination to exaggerate and fantasize, and for relying on the Israeliyat. Thus they were banned from preaching at mosques. In later periods, however, works of Sira became more prominent. 
More recently, Western historical criticism and debate concerning Sira have elicited a defensive attitude from some Muslims who wrote apologetic literature defending its content. Authenticity <inaudible> 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 For centuries, Muslim scholars have recognized the problem of authenticity of hadith. Thus they have developed sophisticated methods see hadith studies of evaluating isnads chains of transmission. This was done in order to classify each hadith into «sound» for authentic reports, as opposed to «weak» for ones that are probably fabricated, in addition to other categories. Since many Sira reports also contain Isnad information and some of the Sira compilers were themselves practicing jurists and hadith transmitters it was possible to apply the same methods of hadith criticism to the Sira reports. However, some Sira reports were written using an imprecise form of Isnad, or what modern historians call the «collective Isnad» or «combined reports». The use of collective isnad meant that a report may be related on the authority of multiple persons without distinguishing the words of one person from another. This lack of precision led some hadith scholars to take any report that used a collective isnad to be lacking in authenticity. According to Vim Raven, it is often noted that a coherent image of Muhammad cannot be formed from the literature of Sirah, whose authenticity and factual value have been questioned on a number of different grounds. He lists the following arguments against the authenticity of Sira, followed here by counter-arguments Hardly any Sira work was compiled during the first century of Islam. However, Fred Donner points out that the earliest historical writings about the origins of Islam first emerged in 60–70 AH, well within the first century of Hijra see also list of biographies of Muhammad. Furthermore, the sources now extant, dating from the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th centuries AH, are mostly compilations of material derived from earlier sources. The many discrepancies exhibited in different narrations found in Sira works. Yet, despite the lack of a single orthodoxy in Islam, there is still a marked agreement on the most general features of the traditional origin story. Later sources claiming to know more about the time of Muhammad than earlier ones discrepancies compared to non-Muslim sources. But there are also similarities and agreements both in information specific to Muhammad, and concerning Muslim tradition at large. Some parts or genres of Sira, namely those dealing with miracles, are not fit as sources for scientific historiographical information about Muhammad, except for showing the beliefs and doctrines of his community. Nevertheless, other content of Sira, like the constitution of Medina, are generally considered to be authentic. Early compilations of Sira The following is a list of some of the early hadith collectors who specialized in collecting and compiling Sira and Maghazi reports. Urwa ibn al Zubair. D. He wrote letters replying to inquiries of the Umayyad caliphs, Abd al Malik ibn Marwan and al Walid I, involving questions about certain events that happened in the time of the Prophet. Since Abd al-Malik did not appreciate the Maghazi literature, these letters were not written in story form. He is not known to have written any books on the subject. Wahb ibn Munabi d. during 725–737. Several books were ascribed to him but none of them are now extant. Some of his works survive as quotations found in works by Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Hisham, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, and Abu Nuaym al-Isfahani. Ibn Shihab al d. c. 737, a central figure in Sira literature, who collected both the Hadith and Akbar. His Akbar also contained chains of transmissions, or Isnad. He was sponsored by the Umayyad court and asked to write two books, one on genealogy and another on Maghazi. The first was cancelled and the one about Maghazi is either not extant or has never been written. Musa ibn Uqba, a student of al zuri wrote Kitab al-Maghazi, a notebook used to teach his students, now lost. Some of his traditions have been preserved, although their attribution to him is disputed. Muhammad ibn Ishaq d. 767 or 761, another student of al zuri who collected oral traditions that formed the basis of an important biography of the Prophet. His tradition survived through a number of sources, most notably Ibn Hisham and Ibn Jarir al-Tabari. See also 
Sunnah Hadith Biographical Evaluation ILM al -Rijal. Historiography of Early Islam List of biographies of Muhammad Notes References Further reading